Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams and welcome to the Missouri Method. In this video, which is the second part of a three-part series, I will teach you how to put together a long-lasting, non-toxic bed bug trap that relies on CO2 or carbon dioxide in order to lure bed bugs to the trap. Now, what you see before you are some suggestions of the ingredients that you'll need to begin. And I have already taken a step to go ahead and begin one of the proofing mechanisms um, with the yeast and sugar because that takes at least 10 minutes to begin its proof. So for the purpose of brevity, I have short, made some shortcuts to this video that you will not experience in your real world application of this procedure. Now let's begin by identifying all the parts that you're going to need to proceed. First, we have sugar. I have gone ahead and put two cups of sugar into this cup. Uh, that is going to react with our instant dry yeast. Here I have a, a brand that, uh, and a, a certainly a large quantity, which you're not going to need. You can find this at any grocery store for about $2 in a small package. Uh, the lure of the CO2 trap is essentially this two liter bottle. Uh, what, this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a chemical reaction within this lure by adding sugar with lukewarm water, dry yeast, and uh, water. And, and that uh, combination is going to create a fermentation process that is going to emit CO2 out of the top of the bottle. And I have already taken the liberty to cut a hole in the top of this bottle using an X-Acto knife. And I recommend that uh, you, you be very cautious when you do this because you can really cut yourself deeply if you're not careful. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to take your yeast and you're going to proof it, uh, which is a baking term. You're going to take some lukewarm water, maybe a uh, couple tables, uh, teaspoons of yeast, and you're going to add that yeast to that lukewarm water, and then you're going to add some sugar, probably about three tablespoons of sugar to that. And you want to proof it for at least 10 minutes until you got a good head going here. And this, this is just for video purposes. I probably would not make that that strong if you were uh, intending to make this for a CO2 trap. As you can see, there's a good bubbling action. There's a lot of fermentation going on in there. And that means that your trap is not going to last as long. It's not going to admit as long because the uh, yeast is converting that sugar to CO2 quicker. Um, so you'll play with this uh, mixture and uh, you'll figure out what works best for you. But under an ideal situation, your bed bug CO2 trap should be emitting CO2 for at least three to four weeks, if not longer. All right, let's begin the process. Now, to understand the bed bug CO2 trap or the Missouri method, there are two components to it. The first component, of course, is the lure. We know that bed bugs use CO2 to sense a blood meal, sense a mammal nearby, and they will crawl to it. Uh, bed bugs are not able to jump. Uh, they are not able to climb on smooth surfaces. And so for that reason, a good porcelain dish coated with some baby powder on the inside makes an excellent pitfall or trap. Bed bugs are not able to get out of this trap once they crawl over the edge. And that's important. That's good to know. So what you're going to do is find a good pitfall or trap. And you can even use something as shallow as a dish like this. Uh, the only thing that you want to do is you want to wrap the outside of that trap so that bed bugs can climb up the ramp. I call it a ramp. Some people call it an ascension platform. I think that's a little fancy. Um, but you can make your ramp out of various items. One of the things that I see a lot of people doing is they'll just take a simple piece of uh, uh, paper towel and fold it down. Something to give 
the bed bug purchase to the side of your ramp. And you can affix it there with glue or a rubber band. But the important thing is you want the bed bugs to be able to ascend the side of the pitfall. And if they don't, if they're not able to gain purchase on the side of a smooth piece of porcelain, you're gonna have to create a ramp using fabric, a t old t-shirt, a bandana, something, but you're gonna have to create a ramp. And for the purposes of this lecture, I'm just gonna use um, a tape to demonstrate how to make a, a, f a fairly good ramp here. And what we're just gonna, we're just gonna take a piece of tape and we're going to affix it to the outside seam of the pitfall. And what we're doing here is we're just making a, a place so that the bed bugs can crawl up to the pitfall, Paul, crawl up to their deaths. So this is just for illustration purposes. Certainly you would be want, using something with a little bit uh, more uh, grooves and is something more poor, something that the bed bugs can can really adhere to. So that, this is just a training example. But what that is going to do is that's going to allow the bed bugs to crawl up the side. Once they get to the top, they're going to fall into the pitfall. And because it's smooth in here and there's baby powder in here, coated in here, they're not going to be able to get out. It's going to be too slick for them to get out. All right, so that's the, the lure and the trap. Now we're ready to, our, our uh, proof has fermented fully. You, you can see by the bubbles, we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and add our sugar, which is our, our catalyst really, our, our base for the catalyst. We're gonna take that funnel, and we're gonna pour about two cups of sugar into some lukewarm water. That is our lure. And we're going to add the already proofed yeast and sugar water mixture to that. Okay. And then we're going to put our lid on. And this is our lid with the pre cut hole. Now, I like to use. Uh, a drill or some other fine device so that I can get a very tight hole. Uh, I find that the tighter holes create more pressure when the CO2 is being created in the, in the lure. When, when this uh, yeast is reacting with that sugar and that lukewarm water, it's pushing CO2 out of that hole. And the smaller the aperture of the hole, the more force that it's going to be pushed out of therewith. Okay, now you're going to need to funnel that CO2 somewhere down here. And here's the concept here. I've used a, a plastic trash bag here that I've cut on the corner. And you can kind of see how that hood, along with a rubber band, which we'll put down over the lure. Now that is going to allow bed bugs to crawl into there. This this rubber band is a little too tight. We 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 can't use this rubber band. It's a little little too tight. But you get the idea. The concept is you want the bed bugs to be able to come up the sides of the ramp. You want them to be able to make their ascension. They'll get to the lip, and because they cannot jump, they will fall down into the trap, and uh, with, with, because of the baby powder, or you could use diatomaceous earth, they will not be able to extricate themselves out of that prison. And they will, it will kill them because the CO2 is over-toxifying them. The CO2 is raining down on them now, and any organism, uh, much like people commit suicide, sometimes they'll drive their car into their garage and leave the engine running and take a garden hose and uh, connect it to the exhaust pipe into the cat interior of their car. It, uh, CO2 has a tendency to dissipate oxygen, push it away. And the same effect goes for the bed bug. Once the bed bug makes its ascension up the ramp, 
and to the side of the porcelain dish or the smooth dish makes it in here into the lure it is not able to extricate itself and it's slowly being bombarded with CO2 levels that are at, a, are at an order of magnitude uh, that their body is not able to process and it will suffocate them, literally over toxify them. Now the beauty of this uh, trap and lure combo is that this CO2 that is being emitted from this uh, lure simulates the CO2 uh, excess release gas that we make, every mammal makes when they exhale. So the bed bug senses the CO2 and is attracted to it. They have very poor eyesight but excellent sense of smell. And they will come from across the room to get at a good source of CO2. This favors you because you can be at work or school and this is the gift that will keep on killing. Even when you're not home, this thing is constantly emitting CO2, attracting bed bugs to the pitfall. Now, the knock on the Missouri method, the thing that makes it unpopular is a lot of people don't construct it properly. A lot of people get too much gap in between their ascension, uh, the ramp, and the lip of the container. They'll put a, a gap where a bed bug cannot make it or they will over, overlap and have the fabric come inside uh, the pitfall and create an escape ladder. So it's a, it's, it's, it renders it ineffective. You can't catch any bed bugs that way. So if, if you use this trap and you use this, I, this concept, the, the mixtures and the measurements may be a little different. Um, this, uh, as you can see, there's already bubbles created here. That's going a little too fast. You don't want to be emitting CO2 this quickly. That means that this trap, uh, the yeast will exhaust all of the sugar uh, rel relatively quickly, rendering the trap uh, obsolete within about two weeks. You want to find a perfect harmony between the amount of dry yeast that you add to the sugar um, and you'll know because of the bubbles, the level of bubbles. And, and so just uh, trial and, and, and experience, practice, and, and you'll find that this is a cheap, inexpensive, non-toxic way to kill bug bugs and kill any crawling insect that is foolish enough to, to uh, get into the pitfall. So, again, my name is Joel Z. Williams. This is the Missouri Method. This is a how-to explanation of how poor people can effectively fight bed bugs using some very inexpensive, very non-toxic household remedies um, and give have some lasting beneficial effects for the whole family. Thank you and we'll see you on the third installation. Hello and thank you for joining me on the second installment of the how poor people can fight bed bugs. My name is Joel Z. Williams. I am the poor people's advocate. Hopefully the techniques, tactics, and procedures I was able to show you today will help you in your war against bed bugs. Now, please remember that this is, bed bugs are a moving target. This is a consistently evolving um, uh, locus of information so as more information comes in I will update with more videos but I need your help in order to continue this research and to continue this uh, giving these ideas away for free there are a lot of people who are attempting to make money uh, on the um, uh, hard times that poor people are experiencing because of bed bugs but I give all of my lectures for free uh, I just ask that you watch the videos that you uh, post to the site I prefer video responses get some activity on the site and remember every dollar that I take in goes into a pool to incorporate more ideas get better traps and teach more people Again, my name is Joel Z. Williams, the Poor People's Advocate. You will recognize me by my white hat, but you will know me by my virtuous ways.